we now come to the heterogeneous equilibria. As the name suggests and as we have seen, when the reactants and products are in different phases, it is called a heterogeneous system. Okay, when the reactants and the products, when the reactants and the products are in different phases, different phases the system is called the system is called a heterogeneous system a heterogeneous system it's called a heterogeneous system fine so there could be some liquid some solid maybe some gas okay So, so one of the most famous things that we had seen, we had started the chapter with liquid becoming gas. The vapor pressure experiment that we had done. A bell jar put over it and the liquid was in equilibrium with the gas. It's a heterogeneous system. Okay, and we saw three such right liquid and gas solid with gas solid with liquid right when we were trying to melt it okay so this is a heterogeneous system now if you have pure substances their concentration if you have pure liquid or or solid then their concentration remains the same I'm not talking about the aqueous aqueous is when you mix something in in liquid right but if you have have some pure substances so so pure substances in liquid or solid form have a constant have a constant concentration irrespective of anything okay whatever you do why mole per liter okay mole per liter is what in fact molarity, molarity. oh yes that is um, that is molarity that I know that again we know but mole per liter is kind of mass per unit volume understand that mole per liter why because because concentration concentration is equal to mole per liter and what is that mass upon molecular mass per liter or, or, or maybe I can convert liter into into meter cube so it is mass upon molecular mass one liter is how much meter cube one upon thousand because thousand meter cube uh, one meter cube is equal to thousand liters so one liter is equal to one upon thousand meter cube 
okay so it is it is 1 upon 1000 meter cube so that is equal to that is equal to 1000 upon the molecular mass 1000 upon the molecular mass into mass per meter cube what is this this is kg this is kg mass per unit volume kg per meter cube which is density so this is density multiplied by 1000 which is a constant upon molecular mass which remains a constant for that substance so that is actually k into i call this k the whole thing as k into density and if it is a pure substance then the density remains a constant water in this this amount or that amount or whatever amount you take if it is only water you are not mixing salt into it you're not mixing some detergent into it then its density remains the same you take a solid say copper you say take iron what happens the density remains the same you take a speck of a uh, small amount of carbon or, or take a huge huge uh, <coughs> cube of, of of iron the density remains the same okay the density is bound to remain the same for a solid or a liquid right or a liquid but it has to be a pure substance okay it should not be an aqueous solution you should not be sort of mixing salt into it or maybe sugar into it or maybe okay because then then it will the concentration will come into play how much of the solute and how much of the solvent you you can you can say they are pure solvents in a sense okay and hence their their concentration remains the same fine you understand okay now if that is the case i can find out the the equilibrium constant for such a thing right i'll i'll find out the equilibrium constant for such a thing and and you must have heard the cracking of calcium carbonate right thermal dissociation of calcium carbonate so this is called cracking of limestone okay calcium carbonate is limestone so so thermal dissociation of limestone It gives you CaO plus CO2. Okay. Now here it is. Limestone is a solid. Calcium oxide is also solid. While this is a gas. Okay. Now how do I write the equilibrium constant for this? Okay. How do I write the equilibrium constant for this? Write it. So it will be concentration of CO2. Is it not? It is concentration of CO2 divided by the concentration of concentration of CO2 multiplied by concentration of CaO divided by concentration of CaCO3. Right? So So Kc is equal to concentration of CO2 into concentration of CaO divided by concentration of CaCO3. 
okay fine now now we have just said that this is a constant this is a constant so they are not contributing at any point of time to kc okay they are not varying so so they do not in a sense tend to vary this right they do not vary it so what i do i kind of pull it all of them to the left okay so so i say it is kc into the concentration of this divided by the concentration of cao divided by the concentration of cao and 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 this is equal to the concentration of co2 so in effect since they are a constant i merge them together and i start calling it some other constant say kc say kc dash, dash. and that is equal to this okay okay do we understand the logic it's quite simple why should we carry something that is actually absolutely not contributing anything to the variation of it you ultimately we are interested in finding out the value of kc okay okay and since these densities are somewhere in the same ranges right they are in the same range so so you you understand their ratio will also be almost cancelling here okay okay so so it is this okay and and what is kp since there is only only one gas so it is equal to that okay what if it's a volatile 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 then it is gas no then that will some part of it convert into gas if that converts into gas then you start treating it as a gas no mm -hmm. same with liquid any volatile liquid or solid you have you start treating it as a gas and no longer as a solid but the amount of solid that is remains that concentration you have to take as constant for example camphor mm -hmm. okay if you have camphor you have maybe some of it evaporating and then and then some of it remaining whatever whatever evaporates becomes the gas but whatever remaining has the same density as as what it was uh, say a few hours earlier understand fine okay now let us try to see this i have this kc dash is equal to the concentration of co2 now which is equal to what which is equal to pressure of co2 into Hmm. Now, what does that tell you? What does this tell you? This equation. K C. Yes. Yes. Okay, minus okay, one. one. What K P? P is equal to C R D. No. So C is equal to P into R D to the power minus one. so now kc dash is a constant at a given temperature now what does that tell you it tells you it tells you that at a given temperature the the pressure of co2 remains a constant okay does at a particular temperature 
द प्रेशर ऑफ द प्रेशर ऑफ सी ओ टू गैस रिमेन्स अ कॉन्स्टेंट does at a particular temperature the pressure of co2 gas remains a constant okay we could have we could have seen this from here as well because if kc is a constant kp also is a constant and if this is a constant then this is a constant right okay now now let us let us take some other equation nickel and carbon monoxide giving us nickel carbonyl okay so so nickel plus carbon monoxide which is gas giving you nickel carbonyl okay which is gas this is balanced no now it is balanced how do i write the equilibrium so our kc will be concentration of nickel carbonyl Your whole force. Nickel carbonyl divided by carbon monoxide to the power four divided by N I. Okay. And N I being a solid moves to this side, so it is N I C O whole force. On CO to the power four, right? And and this is what it'll it'll become. Okay, this is your KC dash. but you should always remember this the object must be present in its pure form pure form okay pure form does not mean only only one one element no but it should be pure for example here calcium carbonate okay here here calcium carbonate it it involves three kinds of elements right calcium carbon and oxygen but then this compound is a pure thing right it is it is it is pure you, you must have read about it in class 10 there are mixtures and there are pure substances in mixtures you will be able to vary the ratios correct for example instead of this if it was say calcium and carbon and oxygen and you were kind of sort of mixing it in a in a this thing without forming calcium carbonate then then it will it will become quite a different thing then the concentrations then all the three will start coming into play because now you don't know what is the ratio right here in calcium carbonate you have no way whatsoever to vary this ratio the law of constant proportions right you just cannot and since you cannot do that you cannot change